Well, Tropical Storm Barry is closing in on coastal Louisiana tonight and is predicted to make landfall early tomorrow morning. In the last few seconds, Storm Tracker Chief Meteorologist Jesse Gunkel got his hands on the latest forecast. Jesse, what's it saying? Yeah, Dion, John, here's the again the very latest. Obviously, we haven't seen much in the way of overall strength change. That hasn't changed. The pressure has not changed. It's actually moving slower to the coast at this point. It's kind of wobbling along our coastline at this point. We are, however, over the last couple minutes and hours starting to see a little bit more rainfall kind of sweeping into southeastern Louisiana. You can see some heavier tropical rain bands now a little bit south of New Orleans driving through Thibodeau, and that's a little bit north of Homa. And again, the rain is really going to start to add up over the next couple hours. We haven't seen much in the way of rainfall so far. Still dry at the Metro Airport. 1500s in Hammond, two tenths in Gonzales, over a half an inch in Slidell today and about almost a quarter of an inch of rain down in Bell Chase. Now the rain's starting to add up down in Homa, up to about a half an inch over the last couple hours. But the winds are starting to pick up out there. We've had gusts today anywhere from the upper 20s to even upper 30s out there. Now gusting at 33 this hour, 37 in New Iberia, 30 32 down in Homa, 39 in Belt Chase, and areas a little bit further south near the oil platforms even had some gusts up to about 90. But again, you got to remember they're elevated, not at the surface. Obviously, I want to show you a big picture here that Hurricane Hunter aircraft have found Hurricane Forest winds, but at an elevated level, so not at the surface. Hasn't quite translated all the way to the ground quite yet, but again, as we dive through this storm, they're finding again that the pressure kind of staying around that 994 or 993. So again, that's not changing much. So the intensification really hasn't changed over the last few hours, but take a look at where it wobbles right now. What they have noticed is that the convection or thunderstorm activity is now starting to tighten up a little bit around the center. We've got a lot going up, kind of ballooning and bubbling out in the central Gulf. At this point, you see a lot of that thunderstorm activity sitting out there. Well, all of this is starting to tighten up and wrap around the center and Obviously, all this is going to continue to drive in, not just even for this evening, but throughout the entire day tomorrow and as we make our way into possibly Sunday and Monday. As you see here again, a lot of thunderstorm activity out in the Gulf. We're eventually going to start to see it drive in. It had a fight, a lot of dry air today and even some uh, mid-level wind shear out there, but that still didn't keep Barry from strengthening throughout the day. So we're still expecting to see it as a Category 1 storm just before landfall. Path has not changed. Landfall still some Somewhere between Vermilion Bay and Morgan City. We could see a couple of wind gusts along the coastline up to hurricane strength, but I think further inland we're talking tropical storm winds, but we still fall on the ugly side of the storm. That northeastern quadrant, meaning heavy rainfall and the strongest winds from this storm. Remember, this is not a wind event for us. This is going to be a rain event, and I'm going to show you some estimated rain totals in just a bit. All right, Jesse, thank you. Now to some breaking news tonight. The city of Baker declaring a state of emergency. Yeah, that happening in just the last 20 minutes. Baker Mayor Darnell Waits saying the order will remain in place until Sunday unless it's extended. Now, you may remember a couple of days ago, the governor put his own emergency declaration into place, and that is the reason why he did that for uh, cities and smaller communities to be able to put their own in place to get some assistance once everything is cleared out. Now we of course will continue to update you as cities and parishes mobilize their emergency services. Well, tonight, city and state leaders are making their final plea before Tropical Storm Barry makes landfall. NBC Local 33's Jonah Gilmore joins us live now to detail why safety is the major message tonight. Jonah? Hey, good evening, John. The number one thing tonight is your protection. Governor John Bell Edwards and other officials say if you don't need to be outdoors, stay in effort to convince citizens to take this storm seriously. Sending a firm warning, state and local leaders are asking you to shelter in place. If you don't have to get out tonight and during the, uh, this storm uh, that we have coming, please stay home. Allow the people for us to work on the people who do need us, and we don't want to be chasing down every sightseer on every street. During their final update before Tropical Berry's landfall, city parish leaders say they've done all they can do, 
hoping to ease the impact. So we've been working tirelessly with through DPW, and they've done an awesome job of taking our back and pump trucks, trying to clean out as many culverts and ditches as we can. Mayor President Sharon Weston Broom says they've done their part, but residents have also been doing theirs. I have to thank the citizens of our community as well because they have been uh, communicating with us on a consistent basis surrounding areas that maybe need additional attention, and we've been uh, responsive. While they're asking you to stay off the streets tonight, Mayor Broom says there's no need to enact a curfew. At this point, it would be premature to uh, enact curfews. Of course, we're monitoring uh, the weather event, and as uh, we proceed down this path, I think we will have ample time uh, to make that decision and enact it if need be. With safety in mind, there are a lot of areas in Baton Rouge and the surrounding parishes that tend to flood. One of those areas is here on South Acadia. This underpass floods pretty easily when it rains, and we've seen it time and time again. People come through here, get stalled out, and get stuck and have to be rescued. Now, officials have already started putting out barricades. You can see them over here in the medium of the street. And of course, if they need to, they will put those in place. And when they do, we will bring you that information. Of course, stay with us on air and online at brproud.com for the very latest. Reporting live in Baton Rouge, Jonah Gilmore, NBC Local 33 News. All right, and Jonah was just telling us about those barricades, and that's because Barry's approaching, and we all know those areas flood very easily. So take a look at your screen here. Areas like Chippewa Street uh, train overpass uh, will be closed because of the potential for flooding in that area and some other areas across the city. Officials say they are trying to prevent drivers from going through high water to ensure their safety. Because you remember the last time we had a major flood, someone died after driving through standing water. For a complete list of barricades up in the capital city, just head on over to our website or download the free Be Our Proud app. Well, several parishes are under curfew tonight and tomorrow as this storm approaches. In South Louisiana, Iberville and St. Martin parishes are not allowing residents on the streets until tomorrow morning. St. Landry and Terrebonne parishes will both be under curfew tomorrow during the day. A few cities, including Thibodeau, are also under curfew. We'll keep you up to date on our website and our free Be Our Proud app on all the curfews as they may be enacted. Well, a few parishes in our area were, are also under evacuation orders, though none nearby are mandatory at this point. Leaders in St. James Parish and Assumption Parish have issued voluntary evacuations, though. In New Orleans, Mayor Latoya Cantrell is urging those outside the zone protected by the levees to evacuate if they can. Remember that as the storm closes in, these could change rapidly. Follow the orders of officials and pay attention to any announcements. New information tonight when it comes to sandbags. The filling stations in East Baton Rouge Parish, all of them, are now closed. The office of the mayor says the city parish handed out more than 96,000 sandbags ahead of the storm. As a reminder, garbage and recycling collection, those services are canceled for tomorrow. Well, a major cell phone provider is providing some relief to customers affected by Tropical Storm Barry. AT&T is giving unlimited calls, texts, and data access to its wireless and prepaid customers. The company is waiving any additional service charges for those who use wireless with billing addresses and prepaid customers with phone numbers and zip codes in 22 different parishes. Well, this runs from today to July 18th. Customers will still get alerts during these dates, but billing will reflect the credits and or waived data, voice and text charges. Well, many gas stations across East Baton Rouge are running dry as people fill up ahead of Barry, but there is one way you can find stations that have gas available. Gas Buddy has a fuel availability tracker app that can show different gas stations out of gasoline or without power. You can also report stations that are dry on gas supplies. You can find all the information about this on our Be Our Proud app. While we're talking about this approaching storm, we can't forget our animals. The Companion Animal Alliance is urging those of us in the capital area to consider fostering animals once this storm blows over. They're expecting their shelters to be at capacity. That's why today the shelter held two emergency fostering orientations, so anyone who wants to foster can do so immediately. 
They say during storms like this, many animals run away from home, and this was an opportunity to make as much room as possible. Be sure to keep identification documents for your furry friends close by in case they happen to run off during this storm. NBC Local 33's weather team is closely monitoring this weather threat, working around the clock to keep you updated. You can stay safe with updates by downloading our BR Proud app. It's free, can be found on Google Play and in the App Store. Well, coming up, sheltering during the storm. Shelters in East Baton Rouge Parish are on standby to house people during this storm. How they're preparing for Barry. That's up next. You're watching NBC Local 33 News with Sean Burns, Dion Guillory, Chief Meteorologist Jesse Gunkel, and Brian Holland with sports. Well, ahead of Tropical Storm Barry, some people are pretty worried about where to go should something happen to their homes. NBC Local 33's Kara St. Cyr explains how one shelter is offering a space as safe haven from the storm. During times like this, when there's a big storm on the way, people in Baton Rouge often have one foot out of the door, but not everyone has the ability to just pick up and drive away. It's more or less, I met somebody online and I got scammed and I end up down here. Raymond Rittenhouse is only one of what the city says is about 900 homeless people in the Baton Rouge area. This group is among the most vulnerable when it comes to natural disasters. And while different parishes are offering temporary hurricane shelters, St. Vincent de Paul is opening its doors to the homeless specifically. When a storm comes through like Barry, uh, we have to react, we have to respond. We want to get those people out of unsafe places, places that could potentially flood. This shelter has all the fixings of a normal temporary hurricane center with the addition of hot meals and individual living spaces that can house multiple people at one time. So we have a, a crew of people that are going to be here on a hurricane level. They're here until the weather ceases to being bad. Before the storm is over, staff are expecting over 100 guests to fill up the building. Nobody wants to give the person a second chance. They say, well, no, we don't want your kind of people here. They, you know, they took care of us and stuff in here. They let us in and stuff like that. For NBC Local 33, I'm Kara St. Cyr. As of now, there are shelters in the Baton Rouge area open for those who need them. If you want to find a storm shelter near you, all you have to do is call 211.
Uh, speaking of which, the Salvation Army Center of Hope Men's Emergency Shelter has extended its hours. The shelter opened its doors this afternoon at 4. We are told beds will be provided on a first come first serve basis with a maximum capacity of 80 men. They'll be served three meals a day and provided a place to shower, sleep and wash their clothing. Salvation Army officials say the shelter will remain open 24 hours a day until this storm has passed and the weather conditions are safe once again. All right, we're still talking about the weather with Chief Meteorologist Jesse Gunkel. And Jesse, this storm is like a grandpa. It's really oh. slow. <laughs> yeah, it's currently crawling right now, and that is... It's crawling, but at least it's moving. And I think that's the that's big takeaway for yeah. a lot of people to realize because this isn't going to be a 2016 storm. We still have the potential for a lot of rainfall. I'm not counting that out of the picture quite yet, but it's going to move. It's not going to stall and spin like Harvey. This one is actually going to march through the state and it should start okay. to pick up a little bit of forward speed once it actually gets inland. It's just waiting till it gets inland. Right. That is going to be the concern at this point. I also want to point out that we've got a lot going on. When you look at the warning map, if you looked at it, you'd have every color under the sun from tropical storm to hurricane warnings to storm surge warnings, you name it. We also have to, however, worry about the possibility that we could even see a few isolated tornadoes out there. We sit under a slight risk for severe weather. We'll have a complete picture coming up after the break. Now, your Storm Tracker team forecast with Jesse Gunkel. Welcome back. Well, everybody's asking me what are the potential impacts here in the capital area? Well, here you go. Tonight going through Sunday, possibly Monday now. Obviously, inland flooding will be our biggest issue. Flash flooding to start out. Then all that water's got to drain into our local rivers and streams. And then we have to watch the river levels very closely because a lot of that water has to quickly make its way into the Comet, the Amy, move downstream. And then we could possibly even see some backwater flooding long term. Also, we've got to keep an eye on the possibility that we could see a tropical funnel cloud out there, maybe an isolated tornado that could do some damage, some power outages across the area if a tree falls on some power lines out there. So we could have widespread power outages, obviously. And if you live 
near water. We could even see a water spout. Now, tropical storm force winds mainly here in the capital area starting out tonight and throughout the day tomorrow. Closer to the coast, we're talking hurricane force winds. We may see one or two hurricane gusts here, but I think most of it should be strong tropical storm force winds. Coastal flooding, a lot of areas are expected to get above three feet above normal, and then storm surge obviously will be a big threat for all of those coastal parishes. If you saw pictures of Grand Isle already, some of those roads were kind of leading into Grand Isle, Port Fouchon, already covered at this point and impassable. So here's the current track out there. Right now, winds are sustained at 65, gusting at 75, heading west-northwest now at 3 miles per hour, and the pressure really has not changed over the last few hours. It continues to wobble just a little bit south of our coastline. I think it jumped a little bit further south. Main thing is, however, that we're starting to finally see some thunderstorm activity getting closer and closer. Some convection moving just around the center of this system. A lot of that extends and bubbles out into the central part of the Gulf of Mexico. Again, this is an asymmetrical system, meaning it's not your typical picture. This is not your typical Katrina, your Gustav. Everything is going to be on the more so east side of the storm. It's going to be that comma signature as it dries through possibly as a category one hurricane at landfall. And then as it dries through the air, we get all that heavy rainfall and those strongest winds on that northeastern quadrant. So that's going to be here. And obviously the bullseye for heavy rainfall now sits a little bit further south at this point. It looks like this system may take a while to get out of the state, but then it quickly starts to pick up some steam. But as it moves off towards the northeast, I do want to show you something else. Notice how a couple track models have slid a little bit, but the overall landfall still pretty much remains the same somewhere between Vermilion Bay and Morgan City. Hurricane Warnings from Intracoastal City all the way to Grand Isle. They have included more areas underneath that tropical storm, including a couple more counties in Mississippi and a couple more parishes around Alexandria at this point. Here's one model. I just want to show you again with this one, showing you that it's still broad. We'll have to see what the new run says if it goes a little bit further west. But tight and keeping all that thunderstorm activity just around the center of circulations. That's very important here, and I'll show you why in just a second. Some of those rain bands still late Sunday going into Monday. This one's broader, and this one keeps that thunderstorm storm activity a little bit further away from the center. So if it tracks for the west, rain still going through the capital area. However, if that bullseye comes right through here, the Atchafalaya Basin, then all this thunderstorm activity is going to move a few more miles to the east through New Orleans, North Shore, possibly Mississippi and Alabama at this point. But we're still going to continue to see a lot of that rainfall. Obviously, over the next couple of days, those feeder bands will continue to be in place across the area, most likely until early on Monday. You see late Sunday going into Monday, still got a couple rain bands here, and that was their in-house model. Flash flood watch for our entire viewing area because the potential for all of this rainfall. Bullseye still putting us at 10 to 20. Locally, we could see some higher amounts out there. That hasn't really changed over the last couple model runs out there, but I do want to point out that if we shift a little bit further west or a little bit east, you can see the difference in our models right now you can see that heavy rainfall 15 inches plus in a lot of areas around Acadiana not so much for us but look what happens another model indicating that those heavier bands start to slide on top of us and you see here the rain totals quickly jump for us obviously in the 10 to 12 to 15 range for a lot of areas across the capital so again once the American model and the European model come out just after midnight we should also get a better run on some of these rain estimates and again just remember that there is that possibility of an isolated funnel cloud out there along with those gusty winds and obviously heavy rainfall, that biggest concern over the next couple of stages. We're going to show you the river stages in the next block because that is the most concerning uh, picture I think that we've got here for a lot of areas. Co-meet at Jura Road, uh, the A-meet at Denham Springs, and then even further downstream. We could be seeing record levels if, if, that's a big if, if the forecast holds at this point. Oh my goodness, yeah, a lot of people keeping an eye on those. Oh. And I'm talking about back to those the rain totals. A lot of people are, uh, may have a little concern or confusion about it. Uh, those numbers are not for just one day or a couple of hours. That's for the yes. whole time or the, I'm glad this event supposed to happen. Exactly. I'm glad you brought that up. That is not just for a few hours. That is for this entire event. And actually, it's for the next seven days. Okay. Mm. Okay. Good to know. Relief there. That makes us <laughs> feel much better. All right. Um, we were going to, definitely going to talk about those river levels coming up and also a couple of stories um, that aren't weather related to update you on.
And now, your Storm Tracker team forecast with Jesse Gunkel. Welcome back. As we mentioned just before the break, I wanted to show you the forecast for local rivers, and some of these are very alarming. This is all if the forecast holds. We're talking 10 to 20 inches of rainfall plus some local higher amounts, and that's mainly a bullseye just around, I would say anywhere from the Florida Parish to southbound all the way down into Ascension Parish at this point. So if that is being said, the heavy rainfall drops across East Baton Rouge. Notice where Comet at Jura Road, you can see that they're expecting the forecast by the time we get to late Sunday going into Monday to crest out at 34.5. That's a big number because the record set back in 2016 is 34.2. So again, that is very alarming. Now again, that could shift. If the rain moves a few miles to the west, then these totals could change drastically. So we are definitely going to monitor these river stages very closely out there. I want to show you a couple other ones out there because down at Amy at Denham Springs, that's also going very high. A lot of these river levels could get with the current forecast you see here could get to record flooding. Amy at Denham Springs and you see here by the time we get to about Tuesday afternoon evening up to about 41 feet. Now again, that's not the record 2016. It was 46.2, but that could also change if the rain totals really start to add up at this point. Obviously moving downstream and I want to show you this one at Bayou Manchac Point because also this one kind of leads off at the top of the screen, but you see your Bayou Man checkpoint. The old record in 2016 was 21.5, climbing already to 20, and I don't know if it's going to crest on maybe Wednesday. Again, once again, I just want to point these out because this is a 10-day forecast. This is not immediately what's happening, so we have to wait what happens for at least the next 48 hours. The rain tonight, the rain tomorrow, the rain on Sunday eventually has to run off and get to some of these rivers and streams before we see what happens. And then also we have to be well aware of backwater flooding. We'll talk more obviously about that coming up after the break.
All right, before we head out, oh, goodness gracious, you've got a busy night ahead. We've got a busy day ahead tomorrow watching the storm. Yeah, it looks like landfall is still going to happen sometime very early tomorrow morning, maybe around like 7 a.m., and it looks like landfall should be as a Category 1 storm. That's a hurricane mm. somewhere between Vermilion Bay and Morgan City at this point. But obviously, I want people to be well aware this is not a wind event for us here in Baton Rouge. Even though we may get a couple strong wind gusts out there, it's all about the rain and how much of it do we get in the next 24 to 48 hours because that's going to be very crucial as to how much actually goes into our rivers and streams. And then, again, backwater flooding, obviously water getting pushed north. Yeah, it's, it's a lot it, to look out for. It's a lot to look out for, so pay attention to those river stations. We've got the link on our website. All right, thank you for joining us tonight. Don't forget to download the BR Prod app for news, weather, and sports when you want it. Have a great night. We'll see you beginning 5 o'clock tomorrow morning.